Dude, this guy. Pretty, Doug. Those balls are landing nice and soft, too. All right, bud, so let's get, um, get a little longer club out. Go back to the 54 for a second. I want to test you with that. We're going to go to that. It's going to be a three-quarter 54. I think it's 85 yards over here. Let's see, I'll tell him right now. 85-yard swing. I just want to get a distance for you. It's going to be about 90 yards, that hole, okay? All right. We got 90? Yeah. Dude, this guy. That's the best thing about like cam assist. You could have them on the driving range and be like, hey Cam, how far is it to that flag over there? Oh well, you know, it looks 90. Let me just hit my 90 yard shot real quick. Lands two yards short. Guys, 92. <laughs> this doesn't even need to go to the range finder. <laughs> Ooh, with the slip, dude. You know what that was right there? That was the slip and nip. Did you see that thing? Gosh, dude. <laughs> little, little nip slip right there. I think was here. Get up on the tight stuff. I want to see you get like right up in here. All right. Oh, there you go. Getting just, off carpet. Getting off just like man. I wish my carpet in my house was that tight. Got the shag. <laughs> Rose loves it. <laughs> this guy. Mm, look at that divot, dude. Look at that thing. Just it's like the whole face. See that? This is so good. Just love that. Dude, Dougie, like Gabe's back here, and we're both sitting back here going like, mm, mm, every time, man. Hey, just so you know, you're flying those effortless 85 right now. Yeah. Effortless 85, okay? So that, that's, here's the big thing. Yeah, let's give me 90 on this next one, but kind of back what I was talking about earlier. Just know that's my number. Because we're watching how well you're hitting it, how effortless you are doing it. Leave it. Look at this ball flight this guy has on this ball, dude. Ooh. And the pinnacle's spinning back even. Yeah. I got the pinnacle spinning. You got the <laughs> on the on the hard firm Bermuda out there that has like the tabletop. Dude, they got the Pinehurst screens out there. People see this. Like they literally these things are look just like Pinehurst number two. Yeah. Well with you know obviously a driving range condition. Right. Um, but like this is what the greens look like. They have that. Yeah, you hit a shot like this where you're like, man, if I'm anywhere on the right half of that green, I don't care how I hit it, that ball's not going to end within 40 yards of the, tar of the hole, right? Hey, they're you got burying elephants out there. Literally, you know what's unbelievable? And I know everybody says this about Augusta, like until you actually go, right? But being at Augusta and going over to like the left side of number eight and seeing how big those hills actually are, dude, it's unbelievable. Yeah, that's how I felt about Pinehurst too, too. When I got out there, I was like, this is... It's not even like the like burying the elephant would be one thing. I like I think about like then going underground, maybe like a little bump. Yeah. I'm talking no. They put the carcass on top, right. and then they put dirt on top. Yeah. <laughs> That's dinosaur, <laughs> <laughs> you know, one thing I love though about I, I know you hit the heavy, but the one thing I love about wedge work is. Typically, when you work with somebody on their wedges for a while, somebody who has a little disconnection in their backswing, most all of us, yeah. right? Yeah. So the whole point is, you work on wedges, you work on efficiency, you get more with less on a shorter swing, meaning just because of that efficiency, the ball's jumping off the face. Well, now what you're getting is a tighter, shorter, more connected golf swing where your body is driving the hands and club around you and that, that efficiency and the impact. You know, that's one thing. I, I really don't ever remember doing impact drills when I was younger. I had an obsession with hitting low tight wedges that spun. So I'd go to the Buick Invitational, which is now the Farmers, yeah. back in the day when you could actually like sit on the range. My dad was a Century Club member, so help run, helping run the tournament, he'd sit me down. I'd sit there and just watch the guys warm up with wedges. And they all hit them so low and tight and had the spin. And I was like, I want to go do that for hours. And I did. I said the, my mom would be teaching tennis over at Stone Ridge Country Club, and I'd sit there and hit wedges for hours. And then you learn, I'm not going to hit a low wedge like this. Boom. Boom. And you just then you learn to go. Wait, hold on. Wait. If I preset that back here, 
and then just turn it around me. Won't it get even better? Okay, well, let me figure out how to do that. Let me turn it and let me have it arrive. And I used to sit there all the time doing that stuff. And for not being a big guy, that's how I got a lot of my distance. But you know what's cool about it? The distance also brought accuracy. Because what, when, you, when you do it right and you're connected, you load your body, you turn, you have the wrist in the right position according to the center of your body, that efficiency gives pop to the swing. You know, I, I think about Cam Sisk when I, when, I, when I think about that. He can swing slower than others and hit it farther than others as a result of the efficiency in his golf swing. And so this is still a thing out there. I'm number one, I go for the efficiency because the efficiency, more than the speed, is going to lead to accuracy and distance. And then you build the speed keeping the efficiency, right, right, right? right? And you start swinging faster, but you start swinging faster trying to maintain that same efficiency, and you then do it to the point at which you can actually maintain it, and that's your, that, that's your, that's your, that's your pace, right? Yep. So that's, that's really important. That's something that working on wedges and doing this often, especially for younger players out there, such a great way to get better at the game, such a great way to get distance. I love wedge work. I love wedge work, especially when it's, you know, just, it's so much fun. Tight lies and stuff. Oh, people come out here and they stress. They see the tight lie, sandy lie. They go, oh, I'm like, no, dude, this is like a great opportunity today. This I is love, fantastic. I love, I love tight lies in my wedges. I just dig in. Love it. Love it. So, you know, here's the big thing. Keep, keep the pace going, meaning keep your count. Make sure your body is moving to that count. But here's the big thing for you. A lot of times, the body will move back and forth and leave the hands a little bit behind, right? That's why I want hip and grip working together. Think about this. I want everybody to think about this. Connection can be misinterpreted. Connection thinks... People think connection, for example, like his arms on like the body and they keep their arms like pinched in. That's actually not connection. That's the hands like behind the body center. Connection is not necessarily the arms touching. It's just having the center of your body and the hands in line with one another, right? Right here. I mean, that's just, that to me is connection, right? Now, here's the big thing. If we're talking sequencing of hips, body, hands, well, if they all go to the top and you think about a horse race, it's back to my mentor, Todd. He used to have great little sayings like this. Run around the track, the inside horse runs around the track, the outside horse runs around the track. Think about the bigger guys out there. The outside horse is going like eight feet. The inside horse turned like eight inches. Yeah. You mean to tell me if they both go at the same speed that they're gonna arrive at the ball together? No. That's why the arm speed relative to the body speed has to sometimes be greater, right? Think about it, especially when taking a longer swing. You need to get your left arm accelerating to actually keep your hands in front of your body. That right there is connection. Connections, not sticking those arms and hands together and then rotating. That oftentimes leads to disconnection. That's an aha moment right there for a lot of people. Dougie, that was one of the better ones right there of the day, um, and ball flight was perfect. Now think about this, bud. We all go back to the early 2000 Tiger Woods talk with Butch Harmon, and you see that famous YouTube video where he goes, you know, yeah, my thought all year is I've just been feeling like I go like this but I look on film and it still looks like this, right? It's, it's what he had to feel to get his arms sync back up with his body to be connected, right? What we do the most though is guess what? We, our players, we try to build that connection as much as possible from the ground up yeah. so that they don't have to feel anything on the way down other than just go. Mm -hmm. But you do have to be aware of hip and grip. They both always should be moving together. Always should be moving together. Oh man. Hey bud. We killed it today. We killed it today. That was awesome. By the way, let's just make this clear. What's the handicap? What was the handicap when we started? Uh, I think I was playing to like 14.5. 14.5. Couple, in, in a couple months here, we've knocked it down to what? I'm on 11 right now. 11 right now. And I'm just going to throw it out there. Like Doug will be, will be a five in no time here. We're going to be doing this. We'll, we'll even keep tabs on this. We'll get, we'll get you yep. back here, Gabe, to film another one in a couple months. I mean, he's going to be single digit within the month, within yeah. the month or two here. Yeah. Um, absolutely not even a question. And then we're going to get down to below the five, um, you know, here probably I'd say within the six months. I think so. 
Yeah, absolutely. So. Take a look at my driver. Real yep, quick. yep. So you can see a pound a couple of those, and then we'll. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? I <laughs> we got to see this. Okay. You know, Let it go, my, my man. Same concept in the backswing, though. Body and hands together. Ooh. <laughs> hey, Dougie, you hit it like that, and we'll not complain about the club. See, hey, by the way, that's that's after doing an hour total of wedge work. It looked like a wedge swing, honestly. It, you know what's funny? And he needs more of that, because that, that club used to dance, yeah. and that was pretty tight right there. That was, that was, that was nice, and that was nice, and he still kept the driver flow to it. Yeah. I'm not just Kelly. Those uh, a, a, a Cobra, they're hot. They're hot, they're hot. hot. Like, that was I mean, like, hot. I put like a <laughs> no, he did. I think he jumped. He bombed that like 280 in the air right there. That's like, yeah. Bow and arrow analogy always works. That's better than the first one. Dude, you just got to wind it up. And for everybody out there, even with the wedges, it's not, nobody shoots the arrow like this. Boom, boom. It's. Yep. Zzz, yep. Zzz, Anything you've seen except bow and arrow. Just think that. Think that. Work on your takeaway. Same thing. You like this driver? I, if, if you hit it like that. That's why I hit it. <laughs> okay, good, good. That's All why right. I've been hitting it. Okay hey, it. yeah, and you're the man, buddy. I appreciate you yeah, big time. You. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching our video. Any questions or comments you have, please leave them below. Also, click the link below to pick up three free videos. We appreciate you guys. Enjoy our channel.